If you're in the ages between 20, 30, 40, and you're looking to buy a home, you may be wondering, how much can I afford? I've purchased two homes, and both times I had no damn clue. But you will have a clue now if you watch the Everything Money channel. Your Uncle Paul, right now, will tell you how much you can afford versus how much you make, and you'll learn right now when you're buying a house what's safe and what's not. Let's do it right now on the Everything Money channel. Well, this is a scary topic for young people. I deal with young people. I'm a wedding photographer. They get married. They move into a new house. And uh, I dealt with this through my 30s. I've, I purchased two homes, and I never know if I'm doing the right thing. It always feels like, um, you know, obviously my realtor is telling me I am. Uh, the banks give me a shit. A the bunch. banks give you money like crazy. Oh, they just money. It's like a no job, no, here's money. But I never feel like in a comfortable state. What Can I afford this house? I'm moving into a home. You might be feeling the same way. The stock market's booming. So there's a lot of people moving in and out of houses right now. And um, I'm and fearful for some of them. Um, if the economy turns south, if the housing, if the house they're paying for, that they're over, overpaying for suddenly is not worth as much. But in general... Like, what can you tell me? How much house can I afford? Because I just moved into a house I didn't think I could afford, and sure enough, it seems like I can. So, and by what, the way, the same thing happened when you were telling me about your first house. Yes. And this is probably something all of our viewers are getting. The first house you buy, you're like, oh, can I really afford? The first house I ever bought, I remember thinking to myself, like, can I afford this? Yes. And then, after a while, what happened with you? Oh, you get, you get, you just get settled into what you need to pay, what you need to do to make it, and all of a sudden, it seems. And what else happens? I don't know. Your income goes up. Oh, yeah, your income goes up, sure. So for people who are, you know, I, I look at the stats on the, our viewers. Uh, literally 100% of our viewers are between the ages of 25 and 45 years old. Okay. Have you not seen that, Don? Like, it's literally been exactly in the dot 100%. It's <laughs> 25 to 45. Like, not even a deviation. Not a 0.1% outlier, just 100%. At least 87%. Really can't get enough of your shorts, Paul. Now look at those things on camera. By the way, we're going to do a live YouTube today, and my shorts are representing my, my, my school that I went to, the University of Michigan. Oh, you, you, you're stealing the V from Ohio State You don't know now? I do this? Oh, God. It's always my joke. When people say, where'd you go to college? You go, the University of Michigan. Okay, and keep, the only people who laugh are Michigan fans or non-Ohio State fans. Keep going. Because Ohio State fans are losers. Anyways, um, no offense. <laughs> Was that crickets? Crickets. I can't hear this stuff, guys. They don't give me... Um, All right, go. Houses. Go back to houses. No, but so... There are many theories about this. Mm-hmm. I've heard in the past, very wealthy people say to me, Paul, buy as much house as you can afford. Buy the most amount of house you can afford. Okay. I've had other people, a good friend, Hesh, over at Liberty Home Mortgage, does not believe in that. In fact, believes in paying down your debt as fast as possible. Really? Oh, yeah. And he sells mortgages and he believes in very little. De- I remember I once called him for a, for a house loan when I was thinking about building. And he goes, he said to me, I said, I got only this loan, blah, blah, blah. By the way, I'm going to, I have the luxury of paying cash and then finance it after it's done. To which he said, well, why would you finance it? I'm like, because I want the debt. He's like, oh, no, just have no debt. I'm like, cash, no, I'm going to have the debt. Like that, that, I'm, I'm going to borrow it 3% so I can go invest it at 15%. Yes. There was a book I read in high school. Go on. So while you were, you know, Grabbing having ass and sex playing with football. lots of women and oh, come on, playing now, football. Nah, my mom's watching this yeah. episode, Paul. <laughs> Sorry, Beth. Okay. Uh, that's not your mom. That's your wife. Mom, if you are watching, go ahead and subscribe down there in the bottom right. It's a little thumb. It looks like well, this. Well, we're going to put up a picture of Seth. From Actually, should we put a picture of me? Let's do that. We'll put a picture of me up. Here's a photo of Paul right now <laughs> as a young lad. This is like four photos of this. Sprout okay. buttermilk skin on the cusp of manhood. <laughs> And uh, how can you not like I this photo? I don't understand how you can't <laughs> click that like. So if mom, if you are watching, it's a little thumbs up in the bottom right. And uh, and Paul's mom, if you're watching too, I don't think she does, but um, go no, ahead and like that as my well. My mom so. probably doesn't know what YouTube is. Anyways. Keep going. Um, when I was in high school, I read a book called The Millionaire Next Door. Oh, I read that book. <laughs> I did, Paul. No, you didn't. I swear to the heavens. No, you didn't. Listen, when? folks, I have read about five to ten books my entire life, and when I worked at this job... You with, read The Millionaire Next Door? I, the Millionaire Next Door. And basically, it describes like, all the things that, that that unsung hero next door who's most likely a millionaire, and you don't know what they're doing, the tactics they're doing to get to that state. And it's not everything that I do. Overpaying on a house, uh, buying too big of a house... Buying a flashy car, they're not doing any of that stuff. No, but. they're like I think. What was? Do you remember the most popular car they had? Uh, I don't. I don't. Ford F one fifty. Oh really? Okay. I believe that was the one. So, Keep anyways, going. there was a thing called a PAW, a prodigious accumulator of wealth. Oh. This is what they said, and then there was a UAW, under 
accumulator of wealth. Okay. okay? So the one thing I remember is they said people who, who got a lot of wealth would buy 1.5 times their household income for a house. Oh, my God. Really? Do you hear that? Yes. What do you think of that? Um, so I did not. I, I bought uh, two. <laughs> I bought a lot more than that. Yeah, about 2.5 times. I did, you. yes. Okay. I don't agree with this number. Oh, so okay. what this means is if you make 100000 a year as a house hold. You should have a house less than one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, you can. I mean, well, of course you can. I have friends, that, but that, yeah, that's not going to get you very far. It's not going to buy you much house. And when you no. have a, now, granted, I'm not telling you you shouldn't do this, mm-hmm. but I'm just sitting there saying this is a very, very low number. When you're making one hundred thousand a year as a household, and you're only buying a hundred fifty thousand dollar house, the great thing about owning a house is it's a forced savings plan. No, I don't understand this. Tell me, tell our viewers what what the hell you're okay. talking about. It's for savings. Let's say you buy a house at the age of 30. That's gonna, me. Right? That was me. And you're going to live in it until you're 60. Over 30 years, what's the price of the house going to do? It stay the same? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The price you're paying for the house to stay the same, but the value of the home will go up. So what are, what's it going to go up to? Let's say oh, it doubles. doubles? So let's say you buy a $200,000 house and it doubles. It's worth 400000 Okay. But you only put... $40,000 down, 20% of $200,000. Mm-hmm. You turn $40,000 into $400,000 in 30 years. So it's basically a way of forcing you to save that money. Because if you didn't put it in the house, what would you be doing? You'd be spending money you probably didn't need. This is what they say about forced savings. You're basically forcing yourself to pay down, de- pay down debt. You can't take the money out of the house. Right. Well, you can, but through home equity. The bottom line is, and it's going up in value. Mm-hmm. So you're turning 40000 into 400000 over a 10-year period. What is that return, by the way? Let's actually do that. What is that return? It is a 8% per year return. Wow. Eight per, so you're going to get 8% return per year, not including the tax benefits, of just doing this. Now, somebody will sit there and say, yeah, but you had to pay money in your pocket. You have that whether you rent or buy. It's the same money. So you're forcing yourself to save, and you're giving yourself an 8% guaranteed return, essentially. You know, I was just going to say, and somebody's like, if, you, if you're viewing out in the middle of nowhere, like some, like my folks and my, bet my wife's folks where they live, I'm thinking, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, um, that house is not doubling. But then, sure enough, I just thought, like, even those houses double. I well, wait a second. Over 30 years, for a house to double in value, all it takes is going up in value by 2.3% per year. Oh, under, and the houses will go up in value by inflation or more over yeah, time. Yeah. So this isn't some unreasonable expectation. Mm-hmm. Over long periods of time, I think it's reasonable to say, and there's some markets, people are out there probably thinking, oh, my, my neighborhood goes up 10% a year. Even better. I don't believe that's going to happen over long periods of time, but even better. So get back to how much can I afford? So then we sit there and say, okay, so how much can you actually afford? I'm more of the, between the PAWs and the... As much as you can. <laughs> now, if you're making 100000 a year, mm-hmm. I think a reasonable amount to put towards your mortgage, taxes, and insurance would be around 25%. Oh, okay? Okay, I've heard this number. So that's 25000 divided by 12. And by the way, this is still high. It's around $2,000 a month. I look at it saying, if you're doing this, you shouldn't, and the reason, but here's the one big caveat. I don't want you to be 60 doing this. Mm-hmm. I want you to be young and knowing you have a lot of upside potential in your income. Yep. That way, as your income grows 5, 6, 7% a year for the first next 10 years, your this becomes a easier, lot easier. Easier, yeah, of course. So I want the caveat when everybody, when everybody out there is watching this going, oh, Uncle Paul says I can afford 25%. There are people out there who do 35%. I think that's crazy. So if your mortgage, tax, and insurance is under two thousand a month when you're making hundred, you will do just fine, mm-hmm. as long as you have good upside in your in your income. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So if you're age thirty, and you just sit there and go, "Listen, I'm a young professional. The next ten years, I could be making two fifty, three hundred. Great, do that. Save your other money. Keep putting it away. And when you're forty, maybe you buy another house that's better, bigger, whatever you want to do. But I don't believe I believe that this is the most you should spend with mortgage. Taxes and insurance. So how much does that buy you? Let's say $1,500 of that is mortgage and taxes and insurance. Mortgage alone, I'm just going to basically tell you, I'll skip steps. At most, it's $300,000. If you make 100 
If you make a hundred, at most it's three hundred thousand. What about people making fifty thousand bucks? No, that's a big do. number according to you. Now fifty thousand dollars. The hard part is the less money you make. A gallon of milk still costs you the same amount of money as a gallon. You know that's the problem. Uh. So, so the higher you go, the more the multiple can be. The lower you go, the lower the multiple can be. If you make fifty thousand, I do think you should be. Let's look at it. What do you think? I do think so. According to my numbers, you should spend twelve five a year divided by twelve is around a thousand a month. Let's say. Let's say seven fifty. This would say one hundred fifty thousand bucks is mortgage. Mortgage is the mortgage payment that says one hundred fifty thousand. I don't agree with that. You're saying to if me, I make fifty grand, when you're I should be buying a, a year, house and one fifty. I'm saying you should, that's what that's what the numbers are saying. Yes. What's up, Timo? I don't think you should do that. I think you should have under a hundred thousand dollar house. Under a hundred. Yes, because the lower you make, the less money you make, mm-hmm. the more. That gallon of milk takes out of your pay. The more that car payment takes out of your pay, the more that utility takes out of your pay as so, a percentage. So my first job after a PhD, I was making 56. My wife was making 30, and we bought a house for 198. So a little bit over double. Over, over double. A little over two. I think it's fine. Fine. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think Boy, it's great. We, we, were, we were trying to figure out if we could ever afford it. And sure enough, absolutely. In fact, we refinanced and we ended up paying more and more. I, I did the reverse of what we, we coach now. What yeah. I know now, Paul, is I was refinancing, paying my house more money. Yep. Um, now, th- this, is still, uh, this is still, to me, a high number, the 300000 But, again, if you have upside potential in your income, where you know you're going to be making, let's say you're in a corporate job, or let's say you're a professional, like you're an early dentist. You're like, mm-hmm. okay, I'm making hundred grand right now, but I know I'll be making two fifty in the next five, six, seven. Great. Be a little more aggressive. It's all about what makes you comfortable. But if you're just somebody who's very, very, I want to be conservative, by all means, that's great. But in a place like, for example, San Francisco. Oh boy. San Francisco, the average person spends 10, 12 times their yearly income. So According to this, if you make 100000 a year in San Francisco, Come on. the average person is paying $1.2 million. Somebody's going to sit there and say I'm lying. It's called price to income. Price to median income. Price to income. And in, in San Francisco, it's 12 times. Yeah. In a place like Ohio, it's like two and a half, three times, I think. Maybe it's, I don't remember the exact number. Yeah. But it's way, way higher in a place like San Francisco. But their thought is, well, if I buy a house for $1.2 now, 10 years from now, it's worth $2 million. It's worth two point five. What do I care? Yes. That's causing bubbles. When bubbles burst, people have problems. But I look at it always, it's always funny how many people have this argument back and forth about what's the exact right amount to spend on a home. It's, it's partly emotional. It's partly financial. Buy as, I, do, I lean more towards the buy as much as you can afford if your upside potential and income is very good over the next, and you're yeah. younger, and you have a lot more upside potential and income. If, you're too, if, you're, if you haven't had kids yet, Factor that in there because kids are going to cost you money. How much yes. do your kids cost you every year? I before I had children, I heard they they cost around ten thousand a year, and I couldn't believe it, but it's very very true. Yeah, each. Yeah, each each kid yeah. for sure. That alone, if it's ten thousand a year, and there's you have two kids, that's twenty thousand dollars a year. That's your that's your mortgage payment right there. The yeah. joke I always have with people when they say, like I always joke when people say like, oh, you have nice stuff. I'm like, well, yeah, I don't have any kids. Yeah, it's partly a joke because it's just you know how much they cost. So anyhow, I. How much house you can afford is both a financial situation question as well as a personal question. And when it comes down to it, it's also where you want to put your money. I mean, um, you know, I, I have a friend that says it's really interesting. He just says, you know, we vote with what we vote with our money really in life, not mm-hmm. not for elections, but we just we vote for what we love. And so, I moved in this new home, and I I love the sunsets in the back. I moved to a more simple life. We don't go on lavishing vacations besides Mexico luxuryzll dot com. Are we changing that website, Paul? At some point, yeah. Yeah, but um, I only go to Paul's Mexico homes for vacation. But um, we, we, you know, we I overspend on my home because I like sitting by my fire out back and having you over for steaks. And uh, but when we have a million subscribers here and you're making a lot more money, oh, well, that'd be nice. Then that's why you have to like the button. Thank you, Paul. Subscribe. That way, Seth can go take more vacations and buy a ten million dollar house that he can't afford. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> Thanks for watching the Everything Money Channel with Uncle Paul and your brother Seth, your bud Seth. And um, they're calling yeah. Uncle Seth in the uh, comments too. Come on, yeah. Comment Guys, below. please look at our last videos and how many comments people make and how many we respond to. We are on that like stink on poop. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Good closer, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> poop. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Bye, guys.